Y'all get ready? Yes, you get Y'all ready. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your teacups ready because this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey, you guys, it's your girl T. So I want to come on here and talk about a lot of stuff that went on today on social media. So if you guys don't know, this morning, I Stand With Khalif was trending all over social media. If you guys remember back on my news channel, I covered his case extensively. And it was just really disturbing. You know, he was locked up for a backpack. He was locked up for a crime that he did not commit. And he ended up spending three years in Rikers Island because he didn't have bail money. And then once he ended up getting out, he spoke about reform and, you know, he, he basically shed a light on this because some of us are so far removed from situations like that. You know, we don't live in New York. We don't live in the Bronx. You know, we don't really, you know, deal with the criminal justice system. So me personally and other people like me had no idea this was going on. And I learned so much from Khalif Browder's story. And like when he committed suicide, I took that to heart. You know, because I had been following up with this story and I wanted him to like go down this good path. And he just couldn't fight the depression and everything he was going through. And then when Jay-Z helped release his documentary, Time, that was so deep. I learned a lot watching the Time documentary. And rest in peace to his mother. She also died during that documentary. If I just say that I did it, nothing's going to be done about it. I didn't do it. No justice is served. Nobody hears nothing at all. I had to fight. So, you know, three years later, a documentary later, and nothing has really changed. So now people are putting a plan into action to help get reforms with these jails. And they're saying that nobody should be locked up because they don't have bail money, especially when it's a non-violent offense. So Ebro in the morning, Khalif Browder's brother, and so many other people were tweeting this morning, I stand with Khalif Browder, and basically trying to get the criminal justice system to change out there in New York and around the country, okay? So I thought that was just really good. It was very motivational just to see all that happening this morning. And then later on in the afternoon, Kim Kardashian and Alice Johnson started trending, okay? Now, I've been following this story about this whole Alice Johnson situation and Kim Kardashian for months now. And when she went to go visit the White House last week, I followed the story. I did not want to do a video. I didn't want to talk about it until there was some type of outcome. I saw a lot of folks clowning Kim. There was a lot of jokes. The New York Times and the New York Daily Mail were dead wrong for, you know, the story that they ran. They were calling it, you know, Rump meets Trump and just really belittling um, Kim Kardashian's efforts to try and get this woman free. So I want to kind of break this story down to you guys. This this is not Kim wanting attention. This wasn't something that was just done on the spree of the moment. Kim has been literally working with this woman since October, okay? This was not a one-week process like some people are trying to say on social media. What initially happened is that Mike on Twitter, MIC, they had did a story on Alice Johnson, okay? And so Kim happened to just, you know, go on to social media and she seen this on her timeline and she watched it and she felt moved by Alice Johnson's story. If you guys don't know, Alice Johnson is a 62-year-old grandmother and basically she made some wrong decisions in her life. She chose to get into the drug game and um, she was caught and they gave her life in prison without parole, okay? This woman didn't kill anybody. She didn't blow somebody's head off. She literally got caught with cocaine and she ended up getting a life sentence, okay? So when Mike was interviewing her, we got to know more about her. A lot of people felt really bad. And she used her platform to say, wow, this is so unfair because Kim is so far removed from this type of lifestyle that she had no idea that this was going on. And a lot of people are removed from this lifestyle. It's not just Kim Kardashian. A lot of people have not had to be in this situation. So they don't understand what goes on with sentencing and, and things like that. So since then, she had hired lawyers. She put in work to try and get Alice Johnson free. I want to go ahead and play you guys a snippet of Kim Kardashian's interview with Mike. Go ahead and check this out and I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. I'll do whatever it takes to get her out. I want to just start in the beginning. How did you get involved with the case of Alice Marie Johnson? I saw your video and when I see a story like hers and I go back to maybe you know, decisions we've all made that probably, you know, maybe not at that caliber, but if you think about a decision that you've made in your life and you get life without the possibility of parole for your first time nonviolent offense, mm -hmm. there's just something so wrong with that. In 
In October of last year, Mike interviewed Alice Johnson from federal prison. Alice is a 62-year-old great-grandmother serving a life sentence without parole for a first-time nonviolent drug offense. When I lost my job, I struggled financially. I made one of the worst decisions of my life to make some quick money. I became involved in a drug conspiracy. When I looked deeper into Alice's case, I got my personal attorney on it, Sean Chapman, who I've known for two decades now, and we're on a mission now. We want to do anything that we can to get her story out there. She spent over two decades behind bars. I think that she really deserves a second chance at life. And why do you think, of all stories, this one spoke so personally and deeply for you? You know what, it was, you can see through in your video, Alice's character. And you guys painted a really good picture of her showing her family life and showing her amazing support system that she has at home. I just had a great grandson. I miss that. Both of my parents have passed away. I was not able to be but either of their sides in their final days that really hit home to me, that she is just missing out on so many milestones in her family's life, just missing out on life. I think for a lot of people, when they saw you share these stories, um, this is the first they've seen you speak out on this particular issue. Um, why? I mean, in all honesty, how I felt, I was like, where I'm at in my life right now, just like, to go and spend my money buying material things just doesn't satisfy me the way that it used to. Mm -hmm. And I'm just at a different place in my life. So I thought, well, if I could put the money into a shopping spree, which sounds ridiculous, to save someone's life and do that once a year, then that would make me just my heart fuller. Mm -hmm. There was a reason why I was looking at my Twitter at that moment. It's not like I'm on my phone all day long. I was meant to come across it. In order to be released from prison, Alice would need to be granted clemency by the president. Her fate currently lies in President Trump's hands. What details can you share about what you're doing to support her case? I think the first step was to hire her a different legal team. Mm -hmm. And then I've been in communication with the White House and trying to bring her case to the president's desk and figure out how we can get her out. Jared Kushner, who I've spoke to, has been really working on some criminal justice reform bills and I would love to sit and talk to them and I know they're internally talking about it. So, I mean, that's such a huge step from where we started with, um, you know, that not even being on their radar. Trump's critics would say that working with him means legitimizing his policies in a way. And I wondered what you think of that, um, whether or not you're a supporter of his or not, um, but also, you know, how you would address those critics who would say working with him, they, they wouldn't approve of working with him. For me, I'm just like focused on criminal justice reform and helping one person at a time. Mm -hmm. And so far, the White House has been really receptive to my calls, and I'm grateful for that. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to stop that because people personally don't like Trump. If you were going to have the conversation with the president about Miss Alice, what do you think you'd tell him? about her and what you'd like to see him do? I would explain to him that just like everybody else, we can make choices in our lives that we're not proud of and that we don't think through all the way. You know, I really do believe that she's um, going to really thrive outside of prison. And I would just urge him to please pardon her. All right, so you guys just saw that interview. And I, and I really love the interview that she did with Mike. She held her own. She knew what she wanted. She was trying to get this woman free. And she did not talk. She did not just say what she wanted. She went to the White House. She met with Donald Trump. She met with Jared Kushner. You know what I'm saying? And she sat there and she talked to them. And Donald Trump today ended up pardoning 
Alice Johnson and Kim Kardashian was so happy. Just an hour ago on CNN, they showed Alice Johnson getting out. Her family was there to greet her. This entire situation is just amazing to me. I want you guys to go ahead and check out these two clips. I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. A mother and daughter are reunited on this broadcast, and you'll see it here first. The circumstances, safe to say, are unique. Alice Marie Johnson, you see her here rushing into the arms of relatives, was released after 21 years in prison. She was sentenced to life for a first-time nonviolent federal drug conviction, and you'll hear from her momentarily. Today, in the sixth act of executive clemency of his administration, President Trump commuted her sentence. It came after Kim Kardashian West lobbied the president on her behalf. Alice, does it feel strange to, to be out? Yes, I have not been in a car without handcuffs in almost 22 years. And, and have you had a chance to talk to each other? To Tretapa? Yes. Yes, I spoke with her sh uh, shortly uh, with the attorneys. Well, I don't know if you, if you, if you, Tretessa, if you want to use this opportunity, if there's anything you want to say to your mom. Hi, Mom. I'm so glad to see you out. I'm looking at the video of you <laughs> running out. Uh, I wish I could have been there. You were there with me. I, I always imagined myself as being there, so, but I'm, I'm so glad to see, whether I'm there or not, I'm so glad to see that you got out today. Oh, I'm so, I'm so happy. I'm excited I'm, to see you. I tell you, that was, a, that was the best sight I believe I've ever seen in my life, was to see my family out here today. I feel like I was flying, not running. All right, so you guys just saw that beautiful reunion with Alice Johnson and her family. You know, so this whole situation is very interesting because a lot of people went in on Kim back on May 30th and was saying she was doing this for attention, you know, and things like that. Now, I feel like this. You don't have to like Kim Kardashian. You don't have to like her antics and the fact, you know, she does a lot of attention whoring and stuff like that. But, again, you have to separate different situations, okay? I may not like her, you know, posing on the internet naked and doing, you know, attention whoring things. But in this instance, I can give Kim Kardashian her props. What she did was genuine. It was from her heart. And if I can give Jay-Z props for shedding light on the whole Khalif Browder situation and, you know, putting out that documentary and bringing light to a situation that I really didn't know existed until I watched that documentary because I did not understand how somebody could just, you know, be in jail and not have bail money and, you know, how, you know, for a backpack. I just didn't understand how that could happen. And Jay-Z broke that down to me. So if I can give Jay-Z props for what he did in the Khalif Browder case, and how he brought attention to that, I can definitely give Kim Kardashian her props for using her celebrity, using her relevance to go to the White House, to talk to Donald Trump, and to get this 62-year-old grandmother free for a wrong decision that she made. You know, one thing I've learned over the years, which is growing up, especially growing up in the inner cities, in the hood, is that there's really not a big difference between me and other people and vice versa, you and other people. The main difference is the decisions that we make in life, okay? Some of us, you know, are just lucky. A lot of us have taken penitentiary chances. Like, let's keep that shit real. You know, a lot of people like to come on social media and act holier than thou and act like they've never did no dirt. They've never, you know, put themselves, you know, at the wrong place at the wrong time or gotten involved with shit. We've all taken some type of penitentiary chances, okay? I don't care if it's drunk driving after the club. I don't care if it's selling weed, moving bricks. You know what I'm saying? Just people have done shit to try and get money, to try and get out their situation. And, you know, the only difference between you and somebody who's on the inside is basically a decision. Some of us made the right decision, some of us made wrong decisions, and some of us were just damn lucky, okay? Let's keep that all the way 100. Because I also see some condescending comments saying, oh, well, she did the crime, she deserves the time, who cares, you shouldn't sell drugs. It's very easy to sit on your high horse and say what you shouldn't do, but again, a lot of people have done criminal shit, but they just haven't gotten caught, okay? A lot of people have done criminal shit, and they're sitting in the White House, they're sitting in the government, and things like that. So it's very easy to judge. Judge. Just be grateful that you never had to make those moves if you've never had to make them. But don't think that you're better than somebody because you never know what your situation may be in the future. Because like we say in the South, the same folks you see on your way up are the same folks you see on your way down. So never look down on somebody else's situation and judge them too harshly because you may find yourself out of work. You may find yourself homeless and you may have to take some penitentiary chances just like this woman took. So I'm not going to knock her for her decisions. I'm not going to knock her for her mistake. You know what I'm saying? 
I'm saying? As you guys know on my channel, the only mistakes that I would never forgive somebody for is molesting children, pedophilia, you know, shit like that is unforgivable to me, and taking somebody's life when it was not in self-defense. I don't respect that. But something like this, a first-time drug offense, this woman did not deserve life in prison without parole. So I thank Kim Kardashian for her selfless act. I thank her for using her celebrity, using her platform for something positive. I thank her for putting Alice Johnson's case before her shopping sprees and taking her money and putting her money where her mouth is. So while it's very easy to knock her, how many other celebrities have done what she has done? So nothing but props to Kim. Thank you for looking out for this woman, and I'm super happy that Alice Johnson is now out. She's a free woman. I'm really happy that not only this case, but the Khalif Broder case, is also sparking a conversation on reform. You know what I'm saying? So many people are being criminalized for just the pettiest shit. You know what I mean? You got people who are making juvenile mistakes, and they're going to adult prison, getting two, three, four, and five-year sentences at the age of 15 and 16. So they're not playing out here with people, you know what I'm saying? They're trying to fill that prison industrial complex. So you need to make sure that you are making the right decisions and you need to realize that whatever you get yourself involved in, you have to know the consequences that are coming behind that because they're not playing. And until these reforms are put in place, until these laws are amended, until things are fixed with this broken-ass criminal justice system, you need to be very, very careful, okay? So I'm just really super happy that Kim Kardashian did the right thing in this case and I'm super happy happy that Trump did the right thing and he pardoned Miss Alice Johnson. So anyways, y'all, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on this entire situation concerning Kim Kardashian using her platform to get Miss Alice Johnson out and Donald Trump actually pardoning her. So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. All right. Deuces. <laughs> Hey you guys, it's your girl T and I hope you really enjoyed that video. If you want to know more about my look of the day or if you want a way to contact me concerning advertisement and sponsorship deals, definitely feel free to click my description box. There's plenty of information in there. Please stay tuned for the next video. Talk to y'all later.